Hello there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to see how to create a CLI application for your ABP project. I usually create a small tool to import data into my ABP project. Um, and then after a while, I created a simple CLI to do these things. And I'm just creating a template out of it. Uh, and you can find the um, code here in ABP CLI template. And I also created um, .NET Tutnet template so um yeah exactly so why do you need this basically it's easier to do the repeated task in a cli mm. especially if you are um uploading a large amount of data which is a scenario which i have and i also use it to see data and yeah so the most scenario i see is that uh, you have a excel file or or a legacy data, you just have to read and import into your uh, .NET application or ABP application. You can use this CLI and then um, build on top of whatever you're doing. Um, it is using OpenID uh, to make the logins. So uh, all the conditions you create in the API will work because it's technically going to call the HTTP clients. So let's see how to install um the .NET template and then uh, see what happens um just create a new folder uh, before that make sure you install the .NET cli um i have already um the old version installed um uh, and then yeah whatever the new version is just install the cli template it should be fine and this is the short name so next is uh to create a new project, you just have to write this command .NET new. This is a template name. It's the project name, and then give a API. So I have my API running in abp.endosbush.com. So this is my API. I use it for mostly um, all of my things. So I'm actually using the same. And yeah, so let's try to use this API. Um, and then I will show you how to create a simple CLI application and then run it. I'm going to name my API Tasky. Um, that's the name I usually use. Okay, let's open that in VS Code. Um, so you have this. Okay, I will zoom in a bit because okay, I think you can see something now. Um, yeah, so we have a bunch of things. We should start, uh, VS Code is doing its thing. Uh, first, let's see what is available here. So. We have a program.cs file with a bunch of things. Um, this is not an ABP application. It's using a spectre.console um, CLI, um, uh, but it connects to the ABP application. Uh, so to get started, the first thing you have to uh, understand is that um, the command I did here is using my ABPI project.com. So that is technically wrong because we don't have, but it's important to know where uh, where these things are available and then why they are available. So uh, if you provided your API, all these things will be configured properly. Since I'm, I'm not providing, uh, I'm manually showing what are the strings and then how do you modify them. So the first thing is I'm using nswag uh, to generate the client. So that means um, I need to have NSFAG uh, locally installed. Um, uh, if it is not installed, go ahead and install this NPM package globally. And once that is done, um, this input parameter is where you're pointing to your API. So that means I should point to this um, Swagger endpoint. So you have to come and then um, update this endpoint. So that uh, because when you create your own application, uh, the Swagger endpoints for your application will be different from the default ABP application. Now. So, uh, so that whenever you add a new endpoint, come here and generate the HTTP client. And the next place is in the constants file. The constants file has uh, two endpoints. One is API URL and then the identity URL. So if you are creating a tired application, so, um, uh, or, or microservice applications, your identity URL and the API URL will be totally different. So at that scenario, just keep two different URLs, but now you don't have to. So just because this is a single layer application I'm using, so I can just use the same URL. And now we are pointing 
the uh, CLI to the correct API. What is next? Next thing you have to uh, remember is that that is the script. So I would recommend you open a terminal and then do a .NET build. Okay, so there is nothing in the. So just go to the CLI folder and then create. A, we'll do a .NET build. And um, technically, it should not show any errors. Uh, okay, now let's generate. J just install the packages. Um, the I have plop installed for code generation. I will show you some. Um, okay, now yarn gen dash api so this is the gen command here we are running this so this will go to the um, swagger endpoint we provided and then uh then it will create a namespace tasky.cli.proxy and then output that to tasky client uh, yeah so you can come here and you can see there is a proxy and then the tasky client.proxy and this is an auto generated file yeah just leave that as leave it there don't modify anything in there once that is done the next step is yeah in help just make sure it builds okay it seems like there is an error um let's generate the things again okay i see the error because uh, right now i'm creating the proxy in the wrong directory instead of going to the proxy folder i'm creating a new folder so that means the path is kind of wrong because i created this path relatively i guess so it should be just proxy. Um, I will remove the operation mode. Okay, so let's try again. Oh, first delete the wrong folder. Let's try again now. Okay, and this should pass. Okay, perfect. So it seems like uh, the package.json has a wrong uh, setting. So I will try to fix it um, probably soon. Okay, when once you have your uh, HTTP client, um, the client is configured here in the CLI. So, so this is where the registration happens. We are configuring the uh, generated client and then updating the base address. Um, once that is done, we are also adding a header, which is setting the authorization token. Um, the tenant management is still in progress. Once that is done, the tenant management will also work um, and all the other things are properly configured for you. So right now it will have it has um, login, logout, uh, tenant management configured and then the seeding um, working as a command in your application. So let's say uh, you can come here and then uh, try to do uh, .NET run uh, dash dash well, you can see these are the commands available. Uh, so to log in, you have to do .NET run dash dash uh, login, and this will launch your browser. Um, you can see my browser coming here, and it says 400. Why does it say 400? Because the um, the the CLI is using OpenID to login that's why it launches a browser and it uses uh, the browser to authenticate the user and then generate a token to do that we need a client so if you go to the service and auth service uh here this is where i'm launching the browser and then getting the access token and in that usually this is the location where you provide the client id but the problem is we don't have the client id uh, so i will use my mm, AVP template uh, and then AVP template as a scope. These are the default things I use for the um, API to work. So once you have that, now we can first close it, clear the terminal, do the login again, and it will open and then you will see the login screen. And then admin, and it will ask if you want to authorize, just say accept. And now you have your token. So if you come back to the um, terminal, you will see login successful. And okay, you are logged in. Your login um, is working. Um, but what happens when your token expires? Right now, you have to log in again. So uh, the 
token refetch logic can be done. That's also um, in the pipeline. Um, yeah, so maybe go and give it a star uh, in the GitHub repo because right now um, I basically log in because I don't use the CLI so much. Uh, it's basically uh, done as admin tool. But if you think like, oh, okay, I want to do this anytime, I want to do it only once, um, sure. Just come and create an issue or give it a star. I will look at it whenever I have time. Um, and then this is the path for the CLI. So uh, right now the access token is stored here uh, in the file access token.bin. And that's actually coming from the user profile folder uh, with the dot tasky folder. So if you go to your user profile, you can find a dot um, tasky folder uh, or whatever the project name you gave. Uh, folder and then you will be able to find the access token there. Um, I also have plans to have a refresh token and then uh, refresh the uh, token whenever uh, the token expires. So that's the token location and also I'm not doing any encryption so keep that in mind. Uh, the, the access token is just stored inside your user uh, root path which is quite secure location. Technically, if, if your system is compromised, of course, your application is compromised, or at least your access token is compromised, not the application. But that's true for all the web applications as well. So yeah, keep that in mind. And um, what else? So the commands are here. So you can run these commands and then services are here in services. So I have a bunch of um, flop files generated for you so you can easily create um, commands or services or settings. So uh, whenever you want to um, generate a new uh, command, you can just run the plop. Um, if you don't know plop, just Google it. It's it's a micro generator framework, which I use and I love, love it because you can come and then do your own um, templating for your code generation. Yeah, um, this is the um, simple login um so maybe i can also do a test of uh seeding run dash dash or uh, before that i want to show you like how many um users are there in the system so if i go to abp react and then go to admin and the abp react uh, application uses this um, um api so if i go in and then check the users I have 15 users, um, but I can come and then see these users. So seed users. And if you come and then, okay, it says um, command is not available. I think what is the command I gave? Okay, I gave the command user. Okay, yeah, okay. It is quite smart. It is actually asking, did you mean users? Um, Yes, so now I'm just seeding um, random users. Uh, so if I come back, right, it's from 15 to refresh. Yeah, C44, I just seeded a bunch of users. Um, the seed, um, the services here, seed, a ran, um, seed random tenant services. So I have um, a method to create random tenants and random users. And the uh, randomness is created using bogus. Um, I don't know whether you know this library it just creates uh, temp data. So I'm just using that library and creating 100 uh, users. Um, this is to check how the grid will look with uh, a lot of content. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I thought um, this will be useful for a few people who also do things like uh, migrating a legacy software uh, into ABP. You can just export your database, create a simple tool, um, and then uh, import that um, this way because technically that's what I do. Uh, so I thought this would be useful for some other people. Yeah, if you like the video, just give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like it, comment on it and say why. Help's channel. And um, that's pretty much it. See you in the next video. Bye bye.